Multimeter development has been quite an exciting journey in the last few years. And uh, this is a very interesting unit for multiple reasons. First of all, it has a color screen which is larger than what you had on many old PDAs or a color screen. And in addition to that, if we force it, you see here, if we force it into current mode, it complains about the missing leads. And in the next few steps, I will unbox this Kaiwitz multimeter and also very, very quickly look at a few nifty mechanical aspects. So, here is the box that we got. And now let's go inside. I'm going to butcher this guy a little bit because, well, reasons. So, here we are. And what do we see here? We get a total of two boxes. We get the KM601S and the KM602. Thank you so much to Kaiwitz for the generosity, first of all, and now it's going to be time to unbox one of them at a time. So, here, this is interesting, we find the seal. So let's cut into the seal, first things first. And we see, that's pretty nice, there's a carrying case. There's also a pretty thick user manual, but it's multiple languages as you see, so it's uh, quite, it's like 25 pages, but that's still a very nice touch. With most of these you don't get any manual at all. And so here we can open this, and here we have it already. That's sweet. I have to say I like this product so far. And yes, this is the actual multimeter, and there is a power button here on top. I'm, and I mesh it, and ta-da! We see it wakes up right out of the box. So, now the next thing is the accessory package, which here is a bit slimmer. We have here a USB cable for charging the multimeter with 5 volts. Then we have this, what seems to be the usual thermocouple, and we have a set of decently high quality probes, but interestingly we have the shrouded configuration here on the top, as you see here, which I personally don't like so much, but nevertheless it's quite a generous accessory package. And now to get to the multimeter. Here on the top we see there is this kind of port here and we can open it. This is for charging the thing. This is the button which feels quite solid and I've already powered it on and off for a few times. And here in the back we have a stand. It's a bit flimsy to open but once it's open as we can see it's very very solid. Looks good to me. And here there is a single screw in what is probably the fuse door. So I'm going to investigate this. And this is very nice. First of all, this is an assembly which you can probably buy as a spare part. And secondarily, here we find two fuses. So if somebody blows the fuse, it's really, really simple to replace it. This is especially important when you are giving this multimeter to cadets, because cadets just love to blow stuff up. And yes, fitting it together, you see here there is these two little claws. You ram it in like so, like so, and then this goes back into the infit, and then you are ready to go. And as for gimmicks, this is something my friend Attila will like a lot. You see here, I push this for a long time, it goes off. And I switch it for a long, push it for a long time again. And we have a little backlight. This is kind of a very funny feature. And I definitely say, 
kudos to them for that. And this is another aspect which I find very sweet. You see here when I switch around and when I take an invalid configuration, this light on top becomes red. And here at the bottom, there are little lights which show which plugs to use. So if I'm unplugging this here, for example, now you see clearly how these light up. So it's telling me, please use this jack or please use this jack. This is also something which makes work a lot easier for a cadet or for a beginner. This is another interesting aspect. They changed the design of this unit in comparison to previous units. And you see here, there is now a plastic rail which tells you which of the fuses goes where. And incidentally, if you want to open the multimeter, you need to remove both fuses because otherwise you cannot pop off the back, as you see here. And this is the open guy, which is actually a quite attractive design. For me here, the most interesting aspect are these two connectors. If you look at them, these are the connectors for the current ranges. And we can clearly see that they have got two snouts, whereas the other one has always only got one snout. And these two snouts are connected to the PCB separately. So a small sensing current can flow between these two things. And that way the multimeter can easily sense when a LED is inserted. And I think this is actually quite a smart design. And yes, here in the back we have the white LED. And we see that this white LED mates into a light pipe of sorts to actually handle the display. And then finally, here we've got the lithium ion battery. We see it sitting below this little door here and it connects to the main PCB via the little jump wire. This display here, it's surprisingly bright. I mean, okay, the camera overexposed it a little bit and you see it's reflective in some way because of the protective foil on top of it, but it's surprisingly bright. And there is an interesting thing you need to keep in mind. This is not a fully graphic display. Instead, it's actually a custom LCD, which you see if you look at this picture. And if you look carefully here, you see a symbol for a damaged fuse. So this thing is, or at least it seems to be able to actually self-reflect if the fuses are damaged, which I personally find a very, very neat feature. And now it's time to actually play with the turn on mode. What do we see here? I put this up. But it stands here behind us a little bit. We see it's now in auto ranging mode and it says here smart. And as long as the meter is in smart mode, it's jumping around as you see and trying to determine what load it actually is connected to. And this guy here is my power supply, my voltage reference. It's a present from an ex cadet of mine. She didn't need the board anymore. And then she gave me the, the board and I put it into a box of T to make it a bit more isolated. And now we're gonna go and mess around with it a little bit. Here at the bottom, of course, we see we have the input and the COM. So the multimeter no should basically already know from where the signal is coming and what is happening. And now we are going to see some temperature indication. We're gonna put it inside here. Now we see it switches to voltage mode when we touch it. I mean, these are a bit wonky here. They don't work together very well with the jack. So let's try it again. And we see now it immediately switches into voltage mode and it shows the voltage like this. 
And the cool thing about this is that we can, of course, also use this button to select what we want. So I can, for example, say I want voltage mode. And now we are only in voltage mode. And let me try this as well. If I'm unplugging this and plugging it in here, we see that the multimeter detects it and switches to a different range. So this is something I can remember having seen originally on the Camille Bauer system. But you see, if I unplug it from here and plug it in, now it complains, and I plug it in somewhere else, then it goes back into this again, or at least it should. Huh? Now it doesn't anymore. Well. And we have to bring back our victim box one more time. Here we have a max min mode. And we have to go into the voltage mode, of course, for this. And then we push it. And now it keeps only the maximum. So if I go in here, now it remembers the maximum. And if I push here, it remembers the minimum. And you see that by pushing max and min, I can repeatedly iterate between these two values. And of course, if you want to make it as in a sensible way, you need to enable this max min mode only once you've established the connection, because you see now it's opening, it's measuring the open voltage zero. And yes, there are these usual additional values, like you've got this NCV, this contact less voltage measuring, you've got degrees, you've got capacitors, you've got diode testing, you've got all the usual stuff, the usual kerfuffle here. And we are back at work. And yes, this is for selecting the different modes, as you can see here. And here we've got our usual contact tracer and we can hmm, play with it. And as we see, sadly, there is quite a bit of a response time. It takes about a second until it responds. And of course, we also have to do the test of the voltage which we get in contact test. Now in the first thing, I've got this guy here and we see we get a 1.7 volts in contact check mode. And now we're going to check for the current. Ah, now we see a current. It's in the range of a few micro amperes. So this is a really, really well done design because you see it works with a minimal amount of current. And I really have to say, this is a very good idea. So now to draw a conclusion, do I like this unit? Well, for 40 bucks, realistically, there is not much not to like. I mean, I would improve the contact tracer, which reacts a bit slow. And maybe a full graphical display, of course, would have been nice, but that would have bust the price. In short, you see, this is a very readable unit. It's a pleasure to use. It's nice and large. And it has this feature of the light up in the front, which makes it easy to use for cadets. So irregardless, if you want to do yourself a pleasure or if you want to give it to cadets, this is definitely a very interesting unit and it's not so much more expensive than the normal Anengs. And with that, I thank you very much for your attention.